Hello, hello, welcome to Quackle Open. Today, we're going to be unboxing Hoplomachus, Rise of Rome, The Lost Cities, Origins, all of the little character and villain expansion packs, uh, or Hoplo, as, as I like to say, because I have a hard time saying Hoplomachus. Uh, now, this is a game by Chip Theory Games, who also produced Cloudspire and Too Many Bones. Uh, Too Many Bones is a game that I've been meaning to feature on the channel for a long time, so keep your eyes open. Gameplay of Too Many Bones will be coming down the road, hopefully sooner rather than later. But for now, we're taking a look at Hoplo, Hoplo Machis. This is a game that I picked up at Origins. I picked up everything they had for sale, so the entire expansions, this is the entire game, all of the expansions, everything that you could want included. I picked up this for two main reasons. First off, Chip Theory games make some incredible products. Uh, this one is not an exception to that rule. It is overproduced and beautiful, has tactile elements, and some really interesting and good gameplay mechanics that uh, recreate or represent this gladiatorial arena combat system. I have grown up loving uh, arena combat simulators, so video games and TV shows and movies that are based in kind of the ancient world, based in Rome, when gladiatorial arenas were the entertainment of the day and gladiators ruled the spotlight. And apparently Hoplo is the gold standard when it comes to arena style combat games. And so I'm really excited to take a look at that. The other reason is it is uh, well known for having a really solid solo mode. Uh, and so not only does the theme and the production quality fit exactly what I'm looking for, but also along with that, a good solo mode is something that I'm always looking for, not only for this channel, but also for myself personally. I just don't get to play games with people as much as I'd like, which is more often than probably I should, but I don't get, I don't get to play games with people as much as I'd like, and so if this game is something that I enjoy, I want to be able to get it out and play a solo rendition of it if I'm feeling inclined. So this will be a quick and hopefully concise unboxing video. I will have B-roll of all these components of the gameplay setup of everything spread out throughout the video, so I'm not gonna spend too long diving into every single one of the components. I'm just gonna open it up and show them to you the best I can. As always, with any of my unboxing videos, I am loosely familiar with this game, so I'll be able to talk about how the gameplay is set up, what the gameplay is like, what these components are used for, as opposed to just pulling pieces out of the box and not really having context or knowing what they're used for. We're gonna start here with the Rise of Rome. So let me go ahead and flip this over, take a look at the back. For many years, slaves and criminals have made their way through the gladiatorial ranks, some coming abruptly to their end and others making names for themselves. Then came the Lost Cities. Advanced civilizations, each with unique fighting styles and tactics. The Empire convinced them to fight in the arena, and Rome and Pompeii have been watching, learning, and honing their skills to challenge these new adversaries. Are you ready for the rise of Rome? So let's go ahead and break into this. Like always, I will cut a seam in the box, and then I will be respectfully quiet. pile of saran wrap. The box feels nice. It has a good texture to it. You have some some really cool uh, sort of uh, video game-esque style artwork on the front. The game is a little bit older. I don't honestly love uh, this top artwork design. Kind of reminds me of an older style video game, but that top artwork, artwork design is not what you're actually playing with. We also have the rule book here, which is fairly short for uh, kind of the size and scope that this game is, which is nice. It means that it's kind of boiled down to those core gameplay mechanics. We have dice. These are going to be how you resolve your battle system. And in the solo mode, uh, the different colors of dice, uh, depending on if they hit or not, will actually have different effects. So some control movement, some control certain types of strikes. Uh, and there's a whole AI operating system behind the scenes that control how your solo opponents will actually move across the board and interact. The dice feel good, they have a nice weight to them. They're just classic square dice with an inlaid H. Give them a roll, but they feel like classic dice. Here we have our player boards. Uh, this top one here will actually be what I was talking about when it comes to the solo mode. These will be how they, uh, different, different factions or different uh, 
like main main bad guys are controlled when you're resolving a solo scenario here's a little bit of flavor text uh, that's tied to each one of these and then lastly we have some flavor text tied to our different houses so we have rome we have pompeii and we have the Colosseum. not only is the Colosseum the largest amphitheater in the roman empire it is the largest in the world. Estimated to hold around 80,000 spectators, the Colosseum is considered one of the greatest works of Roman architecture ever built. Serving as the epicenter for all gladiatorial battles, this arena is packed with new challenges for anyone daring enough to step inside. Like I said, Chip Theory Games always uh, does kind of crazy overproduced content. These, uh, these player boards are no exception. They're made out of a nice, hardy plastic. You can kind of hear it when I wobble them. Inside the core box here, we have a little baggie for organizing those dice. We have a, a chip bag, which is where you're going to be drawing your different uh, kind of factions or your different abilities from uh, while you play the game. We have our health trackers here, with, uh, kind of mid-weight poker chips. And then we have the gold standard. This is a brick of heavyweight poker chips. Now we'll go ahead and open this up here, but these these are fully illustrated, but these are fully illustrated and super heavyweight poker chips. I mean, they feel absolutely incredible. And like I said, I will have nice B-roll of all of these, but what you're gonna find here is you're gonna find special abilities, you're gonna find heroes uh, for each one of the houses along with more common mercenary men. And if you're watching, you'll notice that the box has a lot of space. You might be wondering why. That is because they thought ahead when they were producing this. Uh, they designed this box in a way that allows you to store not only all of your play mats, but also some of the different chips. Uh, a lot of people don't have room in their house to you know, host this much content, and a lot of people wanna make sure that all the content they get can be stored neatly and cleanly in a single box. I'm not sure if everything I have in front of me here can fit into one of these boxes, but it can certainly be consolidated a lot more than it currently is. So that's something that Chip Theory Games uh, thought about and sort of preemptively addressed. So there we have all these. I'll split them up a little bit. So now we have all our tokens back in this box. The last thing to pull out here is this game mat. And like I said, we just have empty, uh, nice quality cardboard tubes to keep everything organized and in place until you add some other neoprene mats. Now this is a nice sturdy uh, stitched neoprene mat and this is actually where this is the gladiatorial arena so this is where the uh, the battle is going to take place down here on the sides we have uh, we have a little bit of player order sort of your player reference sheet uh, here in the middle is where this specific uh, battle is going to take place so you have your starting zones for one through four players you have the center of the arena where you can gain crowd favor or you know, gets unlock special abilities because you're kind of uh, promenading yourself uh, in the center, showboating a little bit. And then along with that, here on the far edges, we have uh, specific areas where you put your upgrades or your tactics chips. And those are things that you play throughout the, the duration of a game to uh, switch the tide or kind of shift, shift a moment. Tactics chips can allow you to move farther, have a special ability or strike, respond in a certain way. Uh, and so they're really helpful and you keep them hidden over here on your side of the board. Go ahead and roll this back up. You can see on the back, uh, the top part is a nice kind of neoprene cloth. The bottom part is a uh, non-slick uh, sort of rubber uh, neoprene mat. So this is not, not only going to be nice to play on, it's not gonna go anywhere while you're playing. And I'm gonna set this whole box over to the side so we can take a look at everything else. Let's see here. All right. And let's go ahead and open up Hoplo Machus The Lost Cities. Now this is going to include some different factions, different houses. It's going to include a whole different arena style uh, game map. So this one will have a giant sword where you, you unlock crowd favor as you play through it. Uh, but it pairs and everything mixes together really nicely. So any of these factions could play in that other arena and vice versa. Rome and Pompeii would be able to come over here and play in this arena. The arena has some new competitors. Legendary cities from far reaches of the earth are sending emissaries to Rome. 
each represent an advanced civilization with warrior types, skills, and tactics unknown to the Empire. Rome reacts quickly and issues a challenge. It reads, Gather your elite. Your best champions and fighters set your strategists to work and join us. Battle in the arena and prove to the world you are worth its notice. Three cities have responded and you are one of them. Go head to head with another lost city or compete together against the arena itself. Use gladiators with unique abilities and tactics to impress the crowd and gain its favor. Bold moves and daring plays could be the difference between a victory and a defeat. Are you up to the challenge? Let's go ahead. I don't need to cut a slip in the side, but I will still be respectfully quiet. And on the side here, this says that it has a solo play, uh, a co-op play for two or three players versus the arena, or a head-to-head -head player versus player. So, just like the other one, we have the rule book. It is still not very thick, but it addresses some of the changes to the chips, some of the changes to the map, uh, and so gives you more kind of overview and specifics on what you find here in this box. I'm gonna set that over to the side. And like you saw in the last one, we have a very similar collection of things. We have our nice heavy duty cards with Xandu, Atlantis, Eldorado, and Pazuli Arena. Built during the reign of Emperor Vespian and finished under his son Titus, this arena was known as the Flavian Amphitheater. Its advanced gear systems were used to quickly lift beast cages up from the arena floor and open them. The arena was designed so that at any time, from any direction, gladiators would find themselves face to face with deadly beasts. So that's one thing that this, uh, this game system here is going to introduce, and that's going to be uh, deadly creatures. Now, like I said, I'll have beautiful B-roll of all of these chips probably playing over the top of me talking and looking at them right now. So I'm not gonna actually open every single one of these packs, but just like the other one, we have our lighter weight health chips, and we have our heavy duty, uh, fully illustrated, uh, really nice quality poker chips. And like the other box, we have two bags, which is where you will store uh, and sort the chips from the house or the faction that you're playing as. The last unique thing we wanna take a look at here is actually gonna be this game map. So this is gonna be the game map that comes in the Lost Cities expansion. Up here on the side, you can see how you gain the crowd favor. Instead of one central region, instead you have you have a few corners and you have two main central regions that give you kind of a bonus or a plus to crowd favor. And you will be starting here on each end and kind of moving in towards each other. We have the order of play, our little player reference sheets on each side here. And we have a little bit of flavor text about the arena itself. I'm going to roll this back up, slip it in here. I promise that this would be as quick of an unboxing as I can possibly do for such an expansive game. I will slide the top back on this one so that I don't have things lost or mixed up too thoroughly. I wanna be able to separate them so that I can uh, get footage of them later. The next one we're taking a look at is Hoplomatus Origins. Hoplomatus returns with three new arenas. In Hoplo Origins, we take you back to where the story began. Deep inside our three lost cities, draft warriors and face off against other houses in three exotic arenas with unique objectives. Increase your house reputation by winning two-player battles or elect to take on the trials in a solo challenge series, sure to leave you well entertained. All origin unit chips are usable in our previous two games and vice versa. Prepare yourselves for premium components and premium gameplay. Your house has been summoned. So this one features a little bit more of a uh, focused solo element, uh, a little bit more story driven. You're, you're actually one of these small houses in a smaller arena training to increase your skill and your fame or fortune. So I'm gonna open this, flip this around, oh, and give you a look at what's inside. Just like the other box, this one is heavy. And I actually like the art and design work of the top of this box more than I like either of the other two. The other two have sort of an older video game-ish style to them. 
Uh, I like this more watercolory, uh, painterly style on the top. Set this down. Just like the others, we're gonna have the same classic rule book, still not very thick. And it's gonna go over kind of everything you need to play this game and also play this specific faction. We also have, just like before, our nice quality cards. We have the trials lineup. We have some solo trials, order of play. And we have a general overview of like house reputation. Set that down to the side. We have our pile of extremely nice quality chips. Right now you're seeing B-roll of the chips that come in this box specifically. We have another bag for solo play. We have another set of dice. And we have our health tokens. And I believe the other faction's health tokens, they've, they've changed it up a little bit on us. They're not all red this time. I'm not sure what these blue ones are for. They might be for defense, or they might just be to separate the houses. So underneath the bottom of this insert here, we have our three arena mats. We have Xandu, we have uh, the Atlantis, and we have El Dorado. And these are going to be the different game mats that you're actually playing on. And I have to say, right away. I think this is the newest version of the game. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe this is the newest expansion or print, and uh, the artwork and the design of these mats are beautiful. The other mats are a lot more utilitarian, right? They, they lay out what you need, they're clear and easy to read, uh, but these just set you in the space. And so I could see myself using these mats, even though they're smaller, even though they're a little bit more uh, self-contained, I could honestly see myself using these mats to play quick little games more than pulling out some of those larger mats. So that's gonna be what comes inside Hoplomachus Origins. Next, let's take a look at these three boxes. We have three different houses, Machu Picchu, Carthage, and Army of One. I'm not exactly sure what this Army of One box is. I think it's a expansion for the solo version of this game. I think it's a another mix of baddies. So let's see here. Set this box down. Yes, I believe that is the case. Along with some thematic uh, battle reenactments. So if you're playing solo and you want to go over a historical event in this game, that's something that they've made possible for you. And here we have our two new opponents for solo gameplay. We have Payas or Palace, and we have Ophion. Let's go ahead and open this bag. Take a look at these chips. And there we are. So we have we have elephants, we have Attila the Hun, we have a mounted hun. So this is gonna be a whole just another set of factions for you to deal with and fight with. Like all of our other chips, the components are absolutely superb. I will set these here so I can keep them organized. Next, let's jump into Carthage. This, like the others, is just gonna be another house. So in here we have two bags. We have the Carthage Origins uh, add-on pack and the Carthage City pack. So this is gonna give you everything you need to add Carthage into the game. Ditto of Carthage, which is the female uh, leader or warrior of Carthage, and a special skills list. Inside of these bags are going to be uh, really nice, heavy components. I'm going to show you B-roll of those so that I don't, uh, so that I don't have to open them now because you're seeing B-roll of them anyway as I talk about Carthage. Next, we're jumping into Machu Picchu. So just like the other one, we have the Origins and Add-on pack. And we have the Machu Picchu City Pack. Just like Carthage, this is going to be everything you need to add in Machu Picchu. New emissaries from faraway lands arriving in Rome and making a grand entrance into the arena has reached Machu Picchu. Wal Kuna is always well informed due to the massive Inca civilization at her fingertips. She knows all too well that these arena games are only a foreshadowing of something much more devious and devastating. The time is right to make her existence known, and the arena is the perfect place to give the people, who will soon be her subjects, a taste of her overwhelming power. So that is the flavor text for Machu Picchu. And then finally, I have three more little expansion packs. 
I have Legends of the Sand. This package contains 15 all new Gladiator and Tactics chips for Atlantis, Xandu, Pompeii, El Dorado, and Rome. I have Beast and Master. This package contains 10 all new Beast and Beastmaster chips for the same houses as before. And then lastly, I have Blade's Edge. This package contains 10 all new champion and equipment chips. Again, for Atlantis, Xandu, Pompeii, El Dorado, and Rome. Oh, what a massive undertaking and game. I'm really excited to get all of this to the table to give you guys a look at some of the uh, solo play and hopefully some multiplayer gameplay as well. This game thematically is right up my alley. I've loved what I've seen of chip theory games so far. And so this is just another one on the list of things that I'm excited to get to the table as soon as possible. Whatever the case, I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and general overview video. I hope it's been informative and given you a little bit more insight on whether or not this game is right for you. If you've made it to this point in the video, you might as well subscribe. I mean, I had to have done something right, or don't. I mean, that's all right as well. You'll just be missing out on gameplay, unboxing, full review, documentary videos. I publish new videos every single week. So, I mean, it's your choice if you wanna miss out on those or not. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. What other games would you like to see me do an overview of? Are you excited to see some gameplay of Hoplo or is this really not your style of game? And please, remember to do the important thing, get out and play some games. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.